Adventist Church as we are in the Signs of the Time Evangelistic Outreach. We hope that today you will have a blessed Sabbath as you worship with us. And we ask you at home and those in our congregation that you will sing with us so that all our hearts will meet in heaven and God indeed will be pleased. Let us pray. Our most kind and compassionate Father, Lord, we have only empty voices without you. And so, Lord, we ask you that as we sing, that you will indeed be pleased as we express our praise and thanks to you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Amen. turn to him 600.
now sing of Jesus' love because he loved us so much he gave us covenants for us to live. 183 be doing our opening hymn. So he promises given to, to all who believe. So 518. Standing on the promises, 518.
Good morning. The scripture reading comes to you from Genesis 17 and verse 7. Genesis 17 and verse 7. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your, and to your descendants after you. Amen. Let us pray. Faith through another week. God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek while waiting in his course today. Most righteous and compassionate Father, Lord, as we come before your presence this another holy Sabbath day, Lord, we want to give you thanks for your grace and for your mercies. We thank you, dear God, for bringing us safe to church this morning. We thank you, dear God, for the blessings that you have in store for us. And Lord, as we wait upon you, as we wait at the foot of the cross, we pray, dear God, that you may shower us with your blessings. Father in heaven, forgive us, God, of our many sins and cleanse us, God, from all unrighteousness. I pray this morning, dear God, that you may create a clean heart within us and renew a right spirit. Lord, bless us as we go throughout the day. Let this program, dear God, be a success. And Father in heaven, as we wait upon your blessings, help us, dear God, to be a blessing to others. These mercies we humbly ask in your holy son's name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you and you. Yes, and you. This morning, our Sabbath school will be done by yours truly, Sister Spence Brown and Brother Cahill Blake. We want to welcome you this morning. But Cahill, could you say good morning and greet our congregation? Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. Kahil, let us welcome the persons who have joined us because we have persons who have joined us from Ten City, Newlands, Scarlet Road, Heartlands. Auntie, we have people who are on Facebook, Zoom, and YouTube. Let us not forget them that persons too are watching us from all the way in Guyana. Yes, God has a blessing for all of us. Persons in the congregation here, welcome to you too. God has a blessing just for you. Everyone, we do ask that you share the link which has, with as much people as you can. Now, this morning we are talking about promise because God has given us many promises. Did you know, Cahill, that there are just about 8,810 promises in the Bible? Yes, that's quite a lot. And from that 8,810 promises, 7,484 of them are promises that God made for all of us. Wow, that is quite a lot, Auntie. Yes, it is. Quite a lot of promises. The Bible is full of promises from, Gen from Genesis to Revelation. As we read our Bibles, we can find the many promises that God has given to us. And we can see that people like you and I are given those promises too. When God makes a promise, we know that that promise will surely come through. A promise is a covenant, a declaration that one will do exactly that they say they will do. It's like a pledge. 
God made a covenant to Abraham and he said, Behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nation. When God spoke to Abraham, he declared that he would bless him and make him the father of many nations. And this is exactly what he did throughout the Bible history. We can see that. One of the greatest promises God made in history was the deliverance of his people from the Egyptian slavery. God would call Moses to declare unto foes unto Pharaoh that it was time for his people to be set free. Pharaoh, however, he did not take God's word seriously, and the effect that happened was really bad for him. God made a promise to the nation of Israel in Deuteronomy 28 verse 9 that if they kept his commandments, he would bless them abundantly. If they obeyed his word and truth, he would set them high above all the nations on the earth. You know what, Cahill? God made that same promise to you and to me. And guess what? This week, all the lessons that we have studied have a promise in them. And I hope that we all notice them. Cahill, can you tell me, those persons who will be doing our lessons for us this morning, after we would have the song done by Daniel, who are those persons who are going to be sharing those wonderful promises with us? Well, Auntie, I do not know, but I hope that they have a great and wonderful message for us today.
salvation. He is my help and my salvation. Breath of God, restore my soul. I will say of the Lord, He is my strong tower, my rock and my fortress, in whom I trust. In time of the storm and in tribulation, he is my help and my salvation. Breath of God, restore my soul. To pray and to be alive. But we pray Jesus alive. Last Lazarus has died and today Jesus cried. Your message. Want him to care about us. Your memory verse. Carry carry burdens. Galatians 6 verse 2. Mary and Martha and Lazarus are brothers and sisters and, and friends of Jesus. But one day, Lazarus took sick. Martha told Jesus the news, but Jesus took three days until he arrived. But the day Jesus arrived, Lazarus had died and been buried. Martha was crying and crying. Jesus said, Remove the stone from which he was buried. And, and Mary questioned, but Jesus, but Jesus insisted. Once they removed the stone from where, Je from where Lazarus was buried, Jesus said, come forth, Lazarus. And Lazarus came forth. The people were happy and rejoiced. Lesson 4, Promises are for keeping. The message is people who love God keep their promises. Memory verse is we have promised by the Lord that we will be friends. 1 Samuel 20 verse 42. Thank you. The real time lesson is about 
bearing the title Christianity. The murmur verse is, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Through Christ we are justified, adopted as sons and daughters, and delivered from the lordship of sin. Through the Spirit we are born again and sanctified. The Spirit renews our heart, writes the God's law of love in our hearts, and we are given the power to live a holy life. As God's sons and daughters, we are called to live as light in the dark world because we have experienced the gift of salvation that comes from Jesus. We are others as well. The Bible does tell us that Christians are different from other people. When you become a Christian, you begin a new life. It's not it's not something that happens overnight. It's more like starting out on a journey. At first, your surrounding may be familiar, but as you keep traveling, traveling, things begin to change. The Bible, the Bible especially, the stories of Jesus painting us a picture of what the new life is like. If we were wearing Jesus' name, we want to live as he lived. That's why it is important to read the Bible. We need to know what's the original. Is it like if we want to copy it? When we turn towards the Son of Righteousness, when we come in touch with Christ, the whole soul is aglow with the, great, with the brightness of the divine presence. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're doing lesson four, and this is for Cornerstone Connection. Appearance versus reality. Key text. Truly, I tell you, among these born of woman, there are not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whosoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Israel has been waiting for their promised Messiah for a very long time. They knew that before he would come, God would send Elijah to prepare the way for him. Even to this day, every Jew looks for the prophet Elijah. At the cedar, that's the Passover meal, a place is set for Elijah to show that they are waiting expectantly for Messiah. They know God will send his prophet ahead of Messiah to, pre to prepare their hearts to receive him. It is no wonder then that the priests and Levites travel outside of the temple area in the country to find John the Baptist and ask him, Are you Elijah? And are you the Messiah? John stood at the dawn of a day, announcing the announcing the rise of the kingdom of heaven. Yet even as this day began to dawn, John was eclipsed by its light. However, he played his God's appointed role well. Although he may have been disheartened while sitting in prison, knowing that his life would soon end, he was probably encouraged by the message his disciples brought back from Jesus. It affirmed the message he had been preaching that Jesus was the Messiah and it gave him the assurance of a life well lived. He had fulfilled God's plan for his life. He could face death with peace. 
if you stop and think about it, there are very, very few great successes in life that are slowly to work of one person. Even the most, even the individual, if they are truly honest, will admit that someone wherever gave them some help along the way. While it is uh, without question that Jesus and only Jesus would complete the mission he had, no one else could go to the cross, die and rise again. It is also true that other people helped him in his early ministry, from the disciples who were accompanied him to others who supplied item of need. To John the Baptist who announced his mission, there are many who contributed to the life of the work of Jesus. As you consider what you have experienced in life so far, who helped you? Parents, siblings, friends, teachers, a pastor, these relationships are a part of life and part of helping others in our common Christian walk. We are here in part to encourage one another. The story of John the Baptist and his role in supporting the ministries of Jesus should offer encouragement even those of us who have small parts to play can be key elements of success in God's great plan. Thank you. In holy pages, this truth can be found. Promise to stand on when darkness abounds. Oh, but right never loses and wrong never wins. And grace will always be greater than sin.
Wasn't that lovely? Yes, grace is always greater than sin. Hello everyone, and uh, this morning we are going to look in a brief while at what we have been studying in the adult lesson study. We are looking at an everlasting covenant. That's what we have been looking at this week. Those of you at home, take out your quarterlies. If you did not have it, you can quickly download it, SSQ, from your favorite app store. And let us have a summary of this lesson. Lesson four. My name is Horace Stevenson. I want you to remember that name, Horace Stevenson. The meaning of Horace Stevenson, or the meaning of Horace, is man of time. And I, we have been given a very, a very hard task this morning to summarize this lesson in 15 minutes. With me on this panel, to my right is Deborah Taylor, and to her right is Joyce Kilfillian. There's Joyce Brown Carr, who is also on this panel, and she will be joining us via Zoom. All right, so before further ado, let us bow our heads as we pray. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you that we can be in your presence. And as we open your words, I ask that you will illuminate our minds so that we will understand these truths that you want us to hear. Thank you for being with us and bless all who listen and watch now. We pray through Jesus' name. Amen. So, we are looking at promises, and the whole of this quarter, we are looking at promises. And we are looking at the promise that God made to Abram. If you want a full background of this lesson, I would suggest that in your spare time, you read Genesis chapter 12, 13, 14, 15, and 17. For our memory text, we are looking at Genesis chapter 17, verse 7. There is a promise that God first made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. In fact, the story starts from Genesis 12. But in Genesis 17, verse 7, it says, I, speaking of God, will establish my covenant between me and you, Abraham, and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God and you to your descendants after you. So here is it, a little part of the promise that God made to Abraham. And this promise will be extended throughout history down to our time. Now, why did God have to make this promise to Abraham? Well, a little after the flood, you remember God had to destroy this world because man had gotten so wicked and vile. And after the flood, the world was good for a little while and then man went back to their, its, its old ways. He began and, and they began to, to do murder and, and, and crimes and violence. And God had to put in place another plan. Well, it was the same plan, but he had to emphasize a plan of how to save mankind. So you can just imagine when you had a little fever, you was um, ill. And 
you weren't feeling well and you went to sleep and you open your eyes and you look around and you saw your mother there at your bedside and you wonder did mommy stay up with me the whole night yes a loving mother will always do that it's similar figuratively you now of God seeing that his world was in turmoil and and sick because of sin he as it were stayed close to us so that we can be better and he executed a plan of how we can be better so that is why we had this promise and in a glance we're going to look at some things in this lesson first of all we're going to look at what is the name of God isn't that interesting does it what does it mean what's the significance of names of God and what did God call himself to Abraham what names did he use to identify himself and why did God change Abraham's name to Abraham? Why are names important? Anyway, so these are some of the things that my panels will be looking at this morning. Well, the first part over in Sunday section of the lesson is God's personal name. The name Yahweh. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 7, it says, And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee the land to inherit it. Now, this is the personal name of the Lord. The name Yahweh. Um, Yahweh is translated Lord. In fact, God called when 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 Abraham asks, "What is your name? Why should I? What should I call you?" He says, "My name is Yahweh." Spells Y H W H, and it is pronounced. Y A H Yah, that's Yahweh, H E W. Now, this word appears some 6,828 times in the Bible, and it is interpreted Lord. So, you will have a lot of people going around saying they are Lord, but, but, this is God's personal name. Now, this name is also shrouded in some sort of mystery because it is saying some of the attributes that God has. And, and these attributes you can't find in nobody else on earth or any other God for that matter. So attributes like eternal one, the existing one, the self-existing one, the self-sufficient one, or the one who lives eternally. These are divine attributes that only belong to God alone. So it's, it, it shows that God wanted to contrast himself with mankind who um, doesn't have these attributes or with other gods who man will worship from time to time that has hasn't got these characteristics it also suggests that god is the eternal one he transcends time and space so it's the god of yesteryear the god of today and the god of tomorrow so the future so that is what god's name and it's it's it it, it is it is mysterious why God had to call his name. Now, God wanted Abraham to know his name simply because Abraham could have faith in him that the all-existing one, the all-powerful one, 
the all-knowing one will be with him always so he can always have faith in him. So we're going to another name and Sister Brown Carr will pick up that um, other name of God. Okay, we're gonna we're looking at name El Shaddai. Now in Genesis 17, verse 1, the main text says, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, El, we're gonna break down the word El Shaddai. El refers to deity in numbers and in Psalms. And Shaddai, Shaddai has no clear message, but what we apply to it is Almighty, which is the most appropriate. And so we are looking at God Almighty or the Almighty God. Now we look back at Genesis 17, verse 1, sorry, and it's where it talks about God may come into Abraham. We realize that God made promises and, and Abraham had covenants. Now he made a promise of, of his descendant had the covenant of the circumcision as a sign of a covenant. Abraham was called to leave his household. Now at 74, God had promised Abraham a descendant. Now this is age 99, 25 years after, the descendant still had not come. Abraham schemed up and tried something which did not work. But he realized eventually that the almighty God with him, nothing is impossible and God will fulfill his promises in his own time without human help. So what we see from this is that Almighty God is able to do all that he has promised. He says that a, a literal translation of Genesis 17, 1 to 6 would say, Jehovah appeared to Abraham and said, I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, will multiply thee exceedingly and thou shalt be a father of a multitude of nations, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. That's God's promise to Abraham. Abram. Now we go on to the word, to, to the other, because we have limited time. Abram, Abraham. Now, concept or change of name is not limited to God's only. Name changes came about throughout scripture. We saw name changes. And we see, see today, and we see that then it was significant because the name change in the Bible reflects the characters or the radical change in the person's life or circumstances. Now, Abraham was the father, the exalted, whereas Abraham means father of a multitude, which is that God, what God had promised him that he would be a father of a multitude. So the name from Abraham to Abraham indicating that he is one of his faithful to fulfill his promise to him. Now, um, he says, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come forth from you. Now, when we're thinking of name changes, brethren, I am Joycelyn, you are Horace, we have Deborah and we have Sir Gilf Joyce Gilfillian. However, we're told that be a, there's a new name written down in glory. It's my name mine and it's yours. What we need to strive for now, brethren, is to strive to attain to get that name with the above all name. That name will remain with us forever because it will be a sinner saved by grace. Thank you. Amen. In Wednesday's section of the lesson, we notice God's progressive revelation of the covenant to Abraham. Hence, it is called the covenant stages. And we discovered three covenants being revealed and in, done in three stages. Each stage is characterized by what I call ACP. And as put forth in the lesson, A for approach, C for command, and P for promise. Now, I get excited when I studied Wednesday's portion of the lesson as well, because I notice that God is always the initiator, Sister Gilfillian, of the covenant. God is always coming after us, searching out for us. So God appeared to Abraham, 
to Abraham rather, and made this covenant. You know, I can imagine talking to Abraham, Abraham, this is a deal I want to make with you. Get up from where you are. Come to a place that I will show you. And of course, it's a relationship that I want between both of us. So here is my part and here is what you will get in return. And when I consider brethren and friends, those watching, Abram was 75 years old. And what I noted that Abram was coming from a pagan society. And so it said to me that it doesn't matter where you are, God can reach you and call you. And God is interested in everyone. And that is why even in our ministry, we must go to every corner. God went into a pagan society and found somebody who was very faithful. Because listen up, Abraham did not question, you know, and I said to myself, this is just great. Abraham acted on faith and he got up and he go along not knowing whither he went, but he recognized who made the promise and he know he can trust this person who made the promise. And so I take away from that the fact that God is calling us this morning to get up from our various situation and come because he has a promise, he has a place prepared for us and he's saying, get up, trust me, my promise is true. And this is what you'll get in return, eternal life, not just futuristic but starting now and so we see Abraham obeyed and he get up and he go now in the second covenant we notice how God demonstrated that listen I am the one making this covenant and so we see what he told Abraham to do, that he should get these animals and whatever. You know, you would, you would have studied the lesson. But I noticed that God himself walked through the pieces. Now, it is said that in ancient time, back there then, when a covenant has been made between two persons, two persons are green, they both should walk through the this symbol that Abraham was told to do, both persons would have to walk through it. But in this, God himself walked through it, symbolizing his perpetual promise that he will make and that he's agreeing to it and he will not break it. And so we notice, therefore, as the lesson puts it, those who enter into the covenant were to walk between the divided pieces, symbolically, vowing perpetual obedience to the provisions that solemnly agreed upon. So God was showing that I am solemnly agreeing to what I said to you, Abram. And so God is expecting us that his covenant is one of trust and total obedience. Total obedience in the covenant relationship with God. In the third stage, or the third covenant, as depicted in Genesis 17, and Sister Bronca would have alluded to that, I picked out the whole matter of name change. And like she said, and I concur, this morning I am happy to know that it doesn't matter what persons may call you, God has a name change for you. And every one of us can experience that. And again, I said, that experience will not have to wait until Jesus come. As soon as we accept God's covenant of grace, he changes your name. What you are known as, you are not that anymore because you are a new creation. And so if you are listening this morning, I am saying to you, if you have not accepted Jesus, Jesus is inviting you into this covenant relationship with him and he wants to give you a new name. Get up and just obey and trust God because he who made this covenant is faithful. Not only that, I noticed that the covenant was sealed with circumcision elder and uh, you know very well that God asks that the male 
should be circumcised. Now, how does that apply to me? I found out that God wants to circumcise our hearts. He wants to strip us of worldly things. He wants to strip us of all the things that are unlike him as we enter into this covenant relationship. Therefore, he says, a new heart will I give unto you. I am saying to us this morning that God is inviting every one of us into this covenant relationship with him because the box did not stop with Abraham or Abraham. It is passed on to the whole human race, which includes you and I. And I think wherever you are, you should say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God's covenant of grace extends to all of us this morning. All of us. And he's inviting us to come into this covenant relationship with him. Will you come? Notice that it's a test of obedience. And soon and very soon, God's first, God's children, those of us who accepted Christ, will be required to pass our test of obedience. And so, he who has promised is faithful. I say to all of us, get up. God has a promised land for all of us. God has a name change. God is capable and is ready to give us a new heart. He invites us in this covenant with him this morning. Will you take hold of this covenant of grace? Knowing that whatever is promised to Abraham is for all of us. And that is true because you can go to Genesis. Galatians rather chapter 3 verse 29 which will tell you that you are spiritually a part of Abraham's seed. God bless you as we enter this relationship. Okay. On the Thursday on the Thursday we are looking at covenant obligations. Now we know that a covenant requires promises and performances on both sides. Right? You can't just go into an agreement and you don't have your promises and, and the doing of it. Now we are looking at the word obligation. Obligation here to me means a commitment, a duty, or responsibility. And when we look at it on both sides, on God's side and on Abram's side, we see there is something that must be done in order for this covenant to remain intact. Now, it says here, God, God, when God made a covenant called Abraham, he knew who Abraham was. Amen. He knew the type of person he would become. And first and foremost, I just really want to ask, do you think God knows us the way how he knows Abraham? Yes. Can we truly say, God, know me? Because here he says, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken. Abraham made the law of God the rule of his house. No, the question I would like to ask, as Christians, do we make the law of God the rule of our home? Are we teaching the way of the Lord to our children? Are we teaching the way of the Lord with, to those with whom we come in contact with daily? Because hear what it is saying to us, that Abraham's household will become a missionary household. From that household, the whole world will come to know of the Savior. That's right. The question I'd like to ask us, as Christians, are we doing the same thing today? When, from, when we leave from our household, we are going out there to let people know that we serve a mighty God. We serve El Shaddai, the one who is always there, the mighty one. Or we are serving Yahweh, the, the Lord who never changes. Yes, we need to... Take, think about it, brethren. Now, it says that God himself determined the provision of the covenant. Man, Abraham did not set out himself to meet with God. He didn't, Abraham was the one that took the initiative. It was God who took the initiative. And in all, the, all circumstances, it is God who takes the initiative. And I believe this morning, God is taking the initiative to call somebody away from sin. Somebody from the prostitute then, somebody from the drugs, 
somebody from some abusive relationship. God is calling somebody this morning. And I hope by like Abraham, be obey and follow. Because that was what Abraham did. You know, on, on our part. You see, God makes promises. Right? But he wants us to do our part. And what do you think our part is? Is to obey and follow. I believe somebody this morning need to obey and follow God. Right? And finally it says, on God's part, the promises are unconditional. God says that he will bless us. Isn't that so? That he will give us the land of Canaan. We don't have the land of Canaan today, but we have the heavenly Canaan. Right? And we must look forward to that. He also made known his will to, to the people. God makes his, his will make known to us. And it is for us to carry out his will. Then what in this covenant obligation, he said to Abraham, you know, I'm going to send the Messiah out of your seed or your race will come the Messiah. And uh, brethren and friends, Jesus came and he died for you and me. His covenant of grace is extended to everybody because Titus 2.11 says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all. Not some, but to all. So today, we are under the covenant of grace. But what will you do with this covenant of grace that we have entered into? For some, we may reject it because when God made a covenant with Abraham or with any one of us, he gives us the choice whether we want to reject it or accept it. But I pray this morning that in the listening of my voice and wherever you are, that you will decide to accept that covenant of grace that God so loved us, that he gave his one and only son, that whoso believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Your duty and my duty is to surrender all to God. And finally, let God do the work in us and for us. Because the Bible says, he that has begun a good work in us, he will finish it. So brethren and friends, let us not struggle or rest ourselves out of the hands of God. But what he has started, let him complete his work of grace, his work of salvation, his work of righteousness in our hearts. And this can all be done as you accept Jesus by faith and allow him to lead your life wherever he wants it to go. May God bless us. Amen. 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 Isn't that lovely? In summary, we try to show you that God's name represents his character. And his character shows that he will never change. The promise that was given to Abraham was a token of his of righteousness by faith there was a sign of that promise the sign of circumcision and you will find out that uh, with all of these promises all of these covenant there is a sign with noah it was the rainbow with 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 abram it's circumcision now the rainbow will be an everlasting covenant until Jesus comes a second time. The circumcision sign was, was a sign for Abraham, and um, it was for his generation. But in the New Testament, according to Paul, we all are Abraham's seed. Romans chapter 2. 4 verse 11. I'll give you some other texts. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. You can write down these and, and, and read them. Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 18 and 19. So, so, so circumstance, circumcision um, came by New Testament time. The significance of it meant um, instead of what it was a sign between Abraham and God. Instead, the essential element is faith in Jesus, 
which leads to obedience. And that is what we are being, we are being grilling down to everyone today. We all, by virtue of accepting Jesus as our personal savior from sin, are a part of Abraham's seed. Same like how Abraham's generation was to teach the nations around them about godliness, we have that responsibility of teaching all those who we come in contact with about the love of Jesus. Won't you do that today? All my Christian friends, won't you do that? There is a world dying out there. It is our responsibility to get them into the ark of safety before it is eternally too late. We thank you for joining with us. We hope that we were able to expound to you, even though in a limited way, of God's goodness and his grace to us and your responsibility by faith and obedience. Thank you.
Welcome back. For those who are just joining us, you have missed quite a lot. We are talking about promises this morning, and we have seen where the promises that God has laid out for us that we can claim them. Now, do you have a promise that you have been claiming? I want you to write your promise in the chat so that we can all see it. I have a promise that I have used. Whenever I feel as if my world is turned upside down, I always turn to my promise and it says, no good thing will God hide from me. So every time I feel as if my world is going upside down, I remember that God says, no good thing will I withhold from you. And I put my name there, Marie. No good thing God will hide from you. And I claim that promise. Can I hear? Is there a promise that you claim? Yes, Auntie. The verse, the promise that I claim is Matthew 6, verse 33. And it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all, all these things will come unto you. Wow. All these things will come. Not some, but all. Let me hope that, brethren, you are claiming the promises of God. Now, there is one promise that I would like all of us to remember. As we are in the signs of the time crusade, there is one promise that all of us can look forward to, and that is the coming of God. God is coming to restore us because as we heard in the children's lesson, when God rose Lazarus, it's a reminder to us that he will come and claim us too. And he says, I promise, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me. That where I am, there you will be also. And you're wondering, why? I wonder what she's really saying. What this is saying is, God has gone to prepare a mansion, not just a small house, a mansion for me and for you. And when he's done preparing that place, he is coming to take us there. Imagine God is getting a mansion ready for me, you, uncles, aunties, or neighbors, or classmates, or church brothers and sisters, the sick and the weakly, and even strangers. Auntie, I want to be there. I, I want, want to, to be in to that, that mansion. mansion too. I would definitely like to be there because if God has gone to prepare a place for me, I want to accept that invitation. As we come to the end of our Sabbath school this morning, we want to say a few things to you. Thank you to everyone who is on Facebook, YouTube, and those who may be watching from all places in Jamaica, like, and from the US, Canada, England, and those others from the Caribbean. We thank, we wish you God's special blessing. Thanks to those who participated this morning, and we look forward to worship next Sabbath when the Virgin of the Ten City will do our Sabbath school. We are, as we now leave, we leave with you a song that will remind you of God's great promising. Have yourself, brethren, a blessed and holy Sabbath. I could speak with the tongue of men and angels in a more excellent way. But if I don't ever love them, just to clang and say, Love is a more excellent way. I could have the faith to remove the mountain. Love is a more excellent way. But if I don't ever love, then I have nothing. Love is a more excellent way. Love is patience. Love is kind. Love is humble, all of the time.
time that easily endured enduring the test so never forget love is a more excellent way Holy Father, we are so grateful to you this morning for your mercies that you have extended towards us and for the promise through the covenant of grace that you have established with Abraham. This morning, Lord, we recognize that this promise is for all of us. And you have invited us to be co-laborers together with you in this covenant of grace. And so you have called us as a people who have accepted you to spread this message of grace to a dying world. We are grateful for that opportunity. And so this morning I ask that you will bless every single member. I pray that every one of us will see and feel the need, the burden of souls to be invite persons who have not yet known you to come into this covenant of grace. Lord, the Sydenham District of Churches, in collaboration with 10 City District and the Church from Ghana, has decided this week to launch the Signs of the Time Crusade. And I pray, Father, as we share with persons this message of grace, that every member will do their part to invite others to come Taste and see that the Lord is good. May the burden of souls be on our hearts as we see what is happening, how the enemy is wreaking havoc and decided to take men and women into 
the pit of hell. We pray this morning that we'll decide in our heart to work along with you through the power of the Holy Spirit to invite others to come. Come from the pit of sin and accept Jesus Christ, who to know is Lord eternal life eternal. I pray, Lord, that every member will be burdened with soul and will stop at nothing but to reach others for you as we pray and work, as we send the links. I pray that others will just subscribe and come and listen to the message and accept Jesus before it is too late. Bless us into this relationship. Bless us as we do our part. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. start our song service this morning, we'll begin with hymn number 88. I sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountain rise. Let's go after two. One, two. I sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountain rise. That spread the flowing seeds abroad and in the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that were day, the sun to rule the day. The moon shall fall at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word and then pronounced them good. Lord, how the wonders are displayed wherever I turn my eye. If I survey the God I pray or gaze upon the stars. There's not a flag or formula, but in that holy glow. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. Reach of the marvel and from thee are subject to thy care. There's not a place where we can flee. My, My next hymn is hymn number one. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of all creation. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh,
life's taught us, great things he has done, and mentor rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But you're admired and greater will be all honor or transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth and rejoice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the faithful rejoice. Who come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Free to take redeem how I love to live, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. How I love to proclaim it with thee by the blood of the Lamb. We thee who is in the light, mercy is bad and forever I am. Redeem, redeem, redeem the blood of the Lamb. Sometimes I hear Jesus is coming to see. But sometimes I hear him and Christ with their freedom we run and 
with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you, Lord, that there is joy in worshiping you. We thank you, Lord, for this, your holy Sabbath day of rest. Certainly, Lord, you have taken us through six days of toils and labor, and now we're in your presence, Lord, to give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your care, your protection, and all that you have provided for us, Lord Jesus. We want to say thank you with a grateful heart. So many things could have happened, Lord, but today you have brought us here to worship you and to glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, that our burdens are lifted at Calvary and you have asked us, Lord, to take all our cares and our burdens to you as your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Today, Lord, we are in the end of times. The signs are everywhere, Heavenly Father. There are troubles all around. Many persons, Lord, are confused. Many persons don't know what to do. Many persons wake up and they think that every day is just bad news. But today, Lord, we just want to magnify and glorify your name because there is still good news. Your words bring good news. Your Bible, Lord Jesus, is good news. And because you're in our life, Lord Jesus, it is good news. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you will empower us all with your sweet Holy Spirit, with your sweet Holy Presence. Help us, Lord, to look into your words deeper. Help us, Lord, to apply your words to our lives so that we may seek to encourage one another. Lord Jesus, there are so many persons who are sick, so many persons who are mourning, so many persons who are jobless, and it seems as if there is no hope. But we thank you, Lord, that there is hope in King Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are our anchor. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you, that we believe in you, and you always come through for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're our God and you're still in control. So sweet, holy presence, Sweet Holy Father, I pray, oh God, that your holy angels will encamp around us even now. Remove from us, oh Lord, all the impurities, all the sadness, and fill our hearts with joy and praise and thanksgiving. Because surely, Lord God, you are alive and you are worthy of all the honor, the glory, and the praise. So, oh, Heavenly Father, I pray, oh Lord, that you'll touch our hearts, touch our minds, Heavenly Father. 
so that we may pass all our burdens and lift everything to you, knowing that you are the God who cares for us and the God who understands our circumstances. You, O oh Lord, knew that this time would come and you have prepared us for such a time like this. But oftentimes, Lord, we feel weak. So we pray, O oh God, that you strengthen us in our weakness, Heavenly Father. Help us to recognize that you are the God who will take us on evil's way. You are the God who will never leave us nor forsake us. So help us, Lord, to anchor our faith in you. Anchor in you, Lord Jesus, because your promises are sure. Lord Jesus, I pray in a special way for your man servant, Pastor Williams. I pray, oh God, that you touch his brain cells. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak to his vocal cords. Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will cover him under your blood and that the words that you speak may be thus saith the Lord, that the words that you speak will bring life to people. It will bring joy to people, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh Lord, that it will transform lives, that many will run to come to know you and to see and to taste that you are certainly a good God. You have provided for us in so many ways, Lord Jesus. And we want to share the good news of salvation to everyone. We thank you for this platform, Lord God, that we can use this platform to reach persons around the world. There are many persons in their homes who are listening right now, persons in the community, persons in the churches, persons at their workplace, Heavenly Father. I pray, oh Lord, that your sweet Holy Spirit will encamp around them even now and to guide them into your words and to show them your truth and to shine your light upon each and every one of us path so that we may follow you all the way. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that our hope is not rest in the life that we now live in you, but we know that there is eternal life and you are God have gone to prepare a place for us that you will come and receive us unto yourself. Touch the lives of all those who are contemplating to accept you fully as their Lord and Savior, Jesus. Touch their hearts, Heavenly Father, and tell them that when you call upon them, they will say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Pray, oh God, that they will all accept your words and that your light will continue to shine upon us and that your Holy Spirit will continue to be with us in a special way and guide us. We thank you, Lord, for this, your Holy Sabbath grace. And may your people be blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I hope that everyone is feeling well this morning. Maybe you come from the east. Maybe you come from the west. Maybe you come from the north. Or maybe you come from the south. You may be a member or you may be a guest. We welcome you nonetheless to another day in the Signs of the Times Evangelistic Series. It is my prayer today that as we worship, we will behold Jesus in all his purity. Jesus who died on the cross for our victory. I also pray that we will join with him in song and joy throughout eternity. Welcome one, welcome all. Have a blessed sound. Side by side we stand, awaiting God's command, worship him Living by his grace and moving on in faith, Jesus himself will see us through. Oh, no. 
Giving is an act of worship as singing and praying. Yes, you heard me right. Giving is an act of worship as singing and praying. The pen of inspiration tells us that every Christian is to act his part as a faithful steward. The methods of God are sensible and right. And we are to trade our cents and our dollars, returning our free will offering to him to sustain his work and to bring souls to him. Large and small sums should flow into the Lord's treasury. We would agree that in good times, at times of challenges, God has been faithful to us. And God has empowered us to be faithful in our tithe and various offering. We partner with God to take this gospel to everywhere in the world. And so at this time, it is normally in the church service where we would collect tithe and offering. Tithe belongs to God. We return what belongs to God. For those who are not familiar with the concept of tithe and offering, tithe is a tenth of our salary, a tenth of what we have earned, we return to God. And God promises and understand God never lets go down on his promise. He always keeps his promise. He promises that he will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive. But we do not give, dear friends, because we want God to give. We give because God has been faithful to us. And so for those who are familiar with the concept of tithe and are familiar with returning tithe and offering, we want to pray that you continue, even in this challenging times, when churches are closed, we want you to remain faithful. God expects you to remain faithful. And those who are not so familiar, but you are inspired to be faithful to God in returning a tithe, and a free will offering. We want you to find the nearest Seventh-day Adventist church to you and ask and inquire, and you will get information as to how you can get your tithe envelope or you can return your faithful tithe to God as you walk with God in a new relationship. The word said, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. How can we do this? We can do this because Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so let us be faithful to God because God is always faithful. And that's why we sing, great is thy faithfulness. If God did not provide and bless us, then we would not have to give. But God has given us to enable us to give. And so faithfulness is expected of us as we expect God to be faithful. And so I pray that each and every one of us will endeavor by the grace of God to be faithful. Do not allow the enemy to say church is closed. You can get away. Time is hard. And so therefore you don't have to. Yes, faithfulness is not an option. It is essential. That's what God 
expect of all of us, irrespective of the circumstances. We are faithful in so many things. Some of us are so faithful in paying JPS. We are faithful in paying NWC. We are faithful in paying our phone bill. And we are faithful in so many things. But the truth of the matter is, when we are in our time, when time things are challenging, when we don't have it, we cannot go to JPS. We cannot go to NWC and say things are difficult, help us out. We go to God because God is faithful. And so it is best to store treasures up in heaven and understand we will experience the faithfulness of God as we are faithful faithful to God in our tithe and our various offering, care fund and wheel and the different kuna and the different things that we contribute to. We are not contributing to man, we are contributing to the work of God and God will reward our faithfulness. So let us pray and ask God to help us to be faithful as we return his tithe and give faithful offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, O oh God, for your goodness towards us. We are thankful for your faithfulness. We cannot re reward you, but you always rewards us. I pray, God, that you'll inspire your children this morning, that you will motivate us all, that even those who are reluctant they know what they ought to do in returning their tithe and, and giving faithful offerings, but they're, they're struggling with this, oh God, because they say time is difficult. But oh God, I pray that you'll inspire each heart, that you will help each of your child to remember that you are always there, that you always care, and that you promise to supply our needs according to your riches in glory. And so give us the strength, oh God. May you help your children to just step out in faith, to trust you in this endeavor, knowing that this is a beautiful partnership that has been established in giving. And as we give, oh God, may you help each and every one to understand that giving is worshiping. May we worship you, oh God, in spirit and in truth. Accept our gift. Accept our offering. Accept our tithe. Accept our generosity. Help us to be faithful in all things as we follow your example in faithfulness. Keep us, provide for us, protect us, and bless us that we all will be channels of blessing, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Remain faithful to God. God bless you.
Amen, amen, amen. God's grace is indeed marvelous. What a joy to be gathered with God's people in many different places, but we are together as one, worshiping God. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you our speaker. He is Pastor Andre Williams, pastor of the Demerara Burdis District of Churches, a husband of one wife and a father of three children. But most of all, he's a man of God and a preacher of righteousness. We have been hearing him all of this week and we want to hear him today. And into next week, as God impresses upon him words to our salvation. And so I want to let you know that he has been in God's service for many years, 36 years and going. And he has garnered into God's eternal kingdom 865 souls. Today, we have the pleasure of seeing God use his man's servant in a marvelous way. And so as we wait to hear from him, I pray that you whisper a word in your heart that God will embolden him, that God will cause him to declare his truth, his grace, his mercy, his great love for his children, and that men and women will hear and yield themselves to God. It is our pleasure today to hear 
a word from God to God's man servant. And so even as he comes, we pray that you'll give him your undivided attention and that you will give him the Lord all the praise, the honor and glory. And so now I trust that as he comes, that you will whisper a word of prayer for him. But before he comes, we will now hear our theme song. Amen. Years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how Jesus would come again someday. If back then it seemed so real, then I just can now but feel. How much closer his coming is today. Signs of the time are everywhere. And there's a brand new feeling in the air. Good morning, good morning. Hey. And, and, and those who in Guyana, it's good afternoon. All is good afternoon. Good afternoon, preacher. Faithful, faithful church here at Belgium. Our member gathered since nine o'clock this morning. And I want to thank them for staying on. Amen. I have some faithful members. They want to support their pastor. And I want to thank you for staying on. Yes. For those who in uh, Jamaica, we want to say Happy Sabbath. 
Happy Sabbath. And it's a wonderful day today. God has been good to us. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, yes. magnify the Lord with me. Mm -hmm. I am so happy that God has given us another privilege, another honor to worship him today. Amen. Today will be a big baptism. And there are a lot of folks who've signed up already. And they will be going all the way with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Even into the watery grave of baptism. Amen. Oh, I tell you, the devil lost some folks today. Uh -huh. Jesus has gained some people today. If you're glad that you're going all the way, say amen. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is wonderful. Yeah. Today, I am privileged to have with me my beautiful wife. Amen. I ask her to come by today that you can see my wife today. And my son is with us here today. So we ask them that they will come up, that you can see them. That when we travel one of these days to, to Jamaica, they will not be stranger to you. So I ask my wife, uh, can I ask somebody to escort her? I have a new Bible reader today, Pastor Dalston Hudson. My wife's name is Sonia Gums Williams. Amen. Sonia Gums Williams. We are so happy to have you. We are so happy to have you today. And Agre, Agre Suriel Williams. All right. Just say hi to the brethren. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I trust that you're having a wonderful time down there in Jamaica. Blessed Sabbath, everyone. Amen, 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 amen. God has blessed me, the wonderful wife. God bless you. God bless you, my son. It's a privilege and an honor to be in the presence of the Lord. Yes, it is. Sydenham, Sydenham and Ten City. Mm. I say hello to Sydenham and Ten City today. And Old Arbor, Old Arbor Road, I'm saying good morning to Old Arbor Road. Good morning. Cumberland, Cumberland, I'm saying wonderful hello to you in Cumberland and those who in Power Avenue, Power Avenue, I just want to say good morning to you. And last but not last, the last is uh, Washington, Washington uh, Boulevard, Washington Boulevard. Now, when I go, Bible reader, when I go to Jamaica, I got to go to Washington Boulevard. All right. I'm not talking about Washington, D.C. I'm talking about Washington Boulevard. All right. What a place yeah. to be. Mm -hmm. I want to live on Washington Boulevard when I come to Jamaica. So you best okay. get a house ready for me <laughs> as we are in a wonderful time. And you're going to take me down these other streets and you're going to show me this. These were some of the streets that you call Old Arbor Road. I gotta go to Old, Old Arbor Road and, and 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 Power Avenue. All right. Gotta get some power in that avenue. Hmm. I do hope that we'll have some power in the avenue today. The message entitled, I guess you were longing for this message. Okay. Had a wonderful time last night. I was, able to, I was able to rest and get a good rest to come today to worship with God and his wonderful people. Amen. The message today it's simple but yet profound and I guess it will bless many hearts. If you're still online decision card is there you can fill it up still. Call the pastor. Call an elder. I want to say hi to all the elders and all of my pastors. Thank you for giving me this privilege to minister to God's people in to in intensity. We pray God today that we will have a wonderful sitting in his presence. Amen. The message. I said the message. Uh-huh. Sinkable. Mm. Unthinkable. Sinkable. Wow. Floatable. Huh. Impossible. Okay. What's the message? Bible reader. <laughs> The Bible reader is giving some problem down here to call the message. Sinkable. Sinkable. Unthinkable. Unthinkable. Floatable. Floatable. Impossible. Impossible. What's the message, Bible reader? Sinkable. Yeah. Unthinkable. Mm -hmm. Floatable. Impossible. You got it, man. You yeah. got it. You got uh -huh. it. Oh, tell somebody, call somebody, call somebody and tell them, text somebody and tell them. Sinkable. Sink. Unthinkable. Uh -huh. Floatable. Impossible. impossible. 
We're going to have church here up here today. Amen. I said, we're going to have church up inside here today. Let us pray. Father, we stretch our hands to you. No other helps we know. If thou withdraw thyself from thee, ah, whither shall, shall we I? go? Mm -hmm. God, today we pray that you step out of these sacred pages yes, and make yourself real unto your people today. Mm -hmm. Touch my lips. Yes. Help me to take back seat, Jesus. Amen. Speak to me today like never done before. Yes, Lord. May people not see me, but see Christ eye and lift it up. Yeah. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. It was 1912. What date? 1912. 1912 in London, in London, England. Mm -hmm. In Scotland, London, England. The builder of the boat was Andrew Thomas. All right. He decided that he wants to build a boat that will be the boat of the century and of the year. Mm -hmm. He started off mm -hmm. in Southport, Scotland, in the shipyard. For many years, he built this boat, designed the boat to build this boat. I've learned in my research that this boat was a 11-story building. Oh boy. This boat was lightened onto a 11-story building. Wow. Gigantic boat. Mm -hmm. Big boat. Big boat. No one ever tried it before and after, but this guy, Andrew Thomas, decided he would try to build this boat. Okay. On this boat, there are three classes of people. How many mm, classes? Three classes. Three classes of people. But I thank God today that there are only one classes of people. Amen. Sinners huh. saved by grace. Yeah. They were the elite that was, that was on this boat. I said elite. The elite. The rich and the famous. Uh -huh. Once you got the money, you got the first class deck. I tell you. It says once you got the money, you got the first class deck. Yeah, man. And you could not have entered into the first class deck. If you didn't have the stature All right. and the eliteness mm. and, the, and, 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 and the fame, you can't enter into the first class this deck. The Bible tells the, 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 the story went on to say that they were to journey on April 12, 1912. April, that Sunday morning, 14th of April, 1912, they were to journey from New Hampshire to New York City. Okay. They were to take this maiden voyage into New York City. Mm. But I tell you that somebody read you in and said, it will be difficult today. There are some icebergs along your way. All right. One lady said on the boat that not even God can test this boat. Mercy. Oh, not even God can test this boat. This is the boat to be. They invited, Bible reader. Yes. They invited some well-known singer from Jamaica. All right. They said, we're going to have a good time on this boat. Uh -huh. They invited Beanie Man. Yes. All right. Uh, they invited Garnet and even Bob Molly. Mm. They said, these guys, we want to be on our boat. All right. And they start to sing and the party start. But mm. somebody, mm -hmm. somebody ahead, there were other boats, I learned, there were other boats that said to this Titanic, don't you venture. It's rough. It's difficult. The iceberg will damage your boat. Oh. But they said, listen, our boat will navigate to the iceberg. All right. So the party started. Party started. And Beanie Man started to sing one love. Okay. And they start to sing. And my good friend that I love to air, who, who, who lives up in the air, I learned in Jamaica. Uh, 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 he will sing and I think we should live up in the hill and they start the party. Mm, live up in the hill. Oh, Bob Marley start to sing one love. One love. One heart. Uh -huh. And they're having a good time. Having a good but time. But something happened along the way. Something happened. 
they failed to take the warning and they went through and the iceberg touched the ship. Mm. I said the iceberg touched the ship. All right. And the water began to enter into the ship. Pandemonium. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody started to run left, right, and center. center. The man in charge of the ship called out to Beanie Man. Uh -huh. Call out to Bob Marley. Uh -huh. Call out to all the singers and said to them, change the music. Uh -huh. Change the music. I want you to all sing. Nearer my God to thee. Mm. Nearer to thee. It was far over. So this unsinkable, mm -hmm. this Sink. unsinkable ship went down into the ocean. I tell you. Matter of fact, I learned that they did not, they did not provide enough life jacket and boat on the ship because they never expect that this ship will go down. Mercy. But you see, whatever man build will go down. All right. I said, whatever man build will go down. Mm -hmm. I come by to tell you here today that God who have made man in spite of all the disaster in our world today, we still have man. I said with all the trees we got to build wall, build houses and bridges, we still have trees today. Yes. Men will go to catch fish, but we still have fish today. Amen. Because when God builds something, it's well built. Amen. I tell you today that the Titanic, the unsinkable Titanic, went down in the space of one day. Mm. A lot of people lost their lives. Yes. Can I just tell you? Yes, preacher. Can I just tell you? Uh -huh. This world is like a Titanic. I tell you. Sailing uh -huh. right into disaster. And the warning has been given from since last week. Signs of the times are everywhere. Yes. God has called me to warn you. They were warned by the ice, by some other ship. Don't venture. Mm -hmm. Iceberg. God has called me over the last six days now. To warn you, to warn. trouble ahead. Mm -hmm. Don't you venture in that direction. Turn around. Yes. Come to Jesus. Amen. He's calling you today. This world is like a like 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 like, like the Titanic is sailing right into danger. Mm -hmm. But there was another boat. All right. I said there was another boat. Another boat. Ah. <laughs> uh, this unfloatable boat. Uh -huh. This unfloatable boat. Mm -hmm. It was impossible. You can't believe it. Sometimes when I think about God and who God stands for. God do, will do some madness. God will do some mad things. How can God ask Israel to walk through a river that's overflowing his bank? All right. That's the God we serve. How can God would have allowed three men to fall into the fiery furnace, then go and take them out? Oh, That's yeah. the God we serve. He, he does the impossible. Impossible. I said God does the impossible. Yes, he does. <laughs> the Bible tells us, after sin at creation, God saw in Genesis chapter 6, what book did I say, Bible reader? Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6, God saw the wickedness. Mm. I said God saw the wickedness. Yes. And I believe that he's seen the wickedness of this earth today. If, if, if you believe that God is seeing the wickedness, say amen. Amen. God is seeing the wickedness of this world today. Yes, he is. But the Bible tells us that God saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth. And every imagination of their thought was evil continuously. Continuous. And God, and who? And God. And God called a man by the name of Noah. All right. What's his name, Bible reader? Noah. Noah is his name. And the description of Noah, the Bible tells us that Noah was a perfect man. All right. Noah was a man who walked upright and lived for God. Amen. Noah asked, God asked Noah, to do something for him. All right. God will always ask us to do things for him down here in this earth. But he's the manufacturer 
of whatever he asks you to do. Mm -hmm. I declare to you that the person who had the blueprint for the ark was not Noah. All right, not Noah. <laughs> the person who got the, blue, blue, the blueprint for the ark wasn't Noah. God oh, yeah. is the one who gave oh, him the yes. blueprint. Yes. He says, I want you to build this boat, a two-story boat. Mm -hmm. A simple boat. Simple boat. But a saving boat. All right. This boat only has two windows. This boat is built out of a simple wood. Uh -huh. But it's God instruction. The people in all time, we go to the text just now. I want to give you a, a background of what was happening then. The people in Noah was living a wicked life. Mercy. And the wickedness was so much that it came up to God. Oh. And God said, I have to do something about this. I tell you. May I tell you that the size of the boat could have hold every last person then. Mm -hmm. My God is not partial. All right. I said, my God is not partial. No way. He says, I am I'm willing that none should perish. None. But that all should come to oh, repentance. Yes, all. So the size of the boat was built in such a way that every person who interested could enter. Amen. May I declare to you today that God won't force us. I said, God won't force us. True. He gives us an opportunity to choose whether life nor death. Uh -huh. But I tell you today, choose life. Choose life. To Jesus. Amen. Genesis Bible reader. Genesis chapter. Genesis chapter 6. six verse, verse 5. What about it says Bible reader? Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. And that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Was only what? Evil continually. Go on Bible reader. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth mm -hmm. and he was grieved in his heart. Mm. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land. Mm. From man to animal to creeping things and to birds of the sky. For I am sorry that I have made them. Mm. But Noah. But what? Wait, 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 Bible ruler. But who? Noah. Conjunction. So yes. you read like this. Noah. But Noah. Found what? Found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Verse the, 9 says, this is the generation. These are the records of the generation of Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah was a righteous man. Hold on, why, Bible? Take your time now. Take your time now. Yes, preacher. He was a what? Righteous man. So even in the midst of sin and wickedness, God still have people who are righteous. Amen. In this wicked world today, God has people that are still righteous. Yes. Go on, Bible reader. Blameless in his time, mm -hmm. Noah walked with God. Yes. Noah became the father of three sons, mm -hmm. Shem, mm -hmm. Ham, and Japheth. Yes. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God. Corrupt. And the earth was filled with violence. Mm -hmm. God looked on the earth and behold, it was corrupt. Yes. For all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Then God said to Noah. Then God said to Noah. The end of all flesh has come before me. Mm -hmm. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. Mm -hmm. And behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. All of my Bible reader. The Bible tells us that God says that the earth is filled with what? Violence. Violence. It sounds like our world today too. Yes. Violence on every hand. Mm -hmm. I tell you there are violence on every hand. Yes. But I thank God that he has a way of escape for us. Amen. I said God has a way of escape for us. Yes. Verse 40 said Bible reader, make yourself a what? A ark of uh, gold for wood. Of Go forward. Uh -huh. You shall make the ark with rooms mm -hmm. and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. All the while, this tells me that God is the architect. Yes. This the God who has the blueprint. Mm -hmm. God is saying to Noah, this ark must have a roof, windows. This what I want you to build, Noah. Yes. Noah 
who was perfect and followed God's instruction, Noah started out building the ark of Amen. safety. Yes. He worked, he built, and he preached. Uh -huh. He preached, he built, and, and he worked. worked. Yes. Some of the very people helped him build the ark. Mm. Now the ark I've learned was on a mountain top. Uh -huh. I declare to you today that the God that we serve is a God of the impossible. Yes. Why would God tell Noah to build an ark on top of a mountain? Hmm. Why would he? Why you tell people today in, that Jesus is coming again? They says, you got, you are crazy. Oh. Uh, we will live and die and live and live. And God says to Noah, there is, this is where I want you to build this ark. On top of the mountain. Top of the mountain. People many days mock Noah. Say all sorts of things to Noah. Call him all uh -huh. sorts of names. Yes. They say, oh, you foolish man. I tell you. We have never seen rain. Mm -hmm. Don't you know in the book of Genesis, they have never seen rain. The Jew will come from the face of the earth. Yes. And water the, water the vegetation. So they have never seen rain come from the sky. Never. Oh, and Noah worked hard. The yes. Bible says he preached about 120 years. That's a lot of preaching. Hmm. Yeah. God's grace is sufficient. There come a time in life when God will say, this is it. Yes. Time up. Uh -huh. The God that we serve today is a long suffering God. Amen. His grace is sufficient for you. Oh, yes. 120 years. I tell you. For them to fix their lives together. Mm -hmm. In other words, they mocked him. Yes. Oh, they say all sorts of things about Noah. I... But Noah recognized that God said it. Yes. And if God said it, Amen. that settles it. Yes. He's following God. Amen. He's building. And the time came. The time came that the building is over by yes. the leader. Uh -huh. It is now time for those who accepted Jesus to enter into the ark of safety. I tell you the story going to get nicer. Mm -hmm. Buckle up for the story now. All right. It's going to get better. The Bible tells us that God gave no instruction to enter into the ark of safety. Yes. People outside the ark having a good time. Having a good time. Oh, um, don't bother with him. Having a good time. Having a good time. Yes. Uh -huh. But every good time have an end. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. True. Back in Guyana, we said every long rope has an end. Yes. They party. They laugh no more. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that there were only eight that went into the ark of safety. Hmm. Only eight persons. True. Noah, his wife, mm -hmm. his three sons, and, and his wife. three sons' wife. Yes. Mercy door was open for anybody. Mm -hmm. Listen how the story gets better now. Can you imagine that God gives mankind five senses? Yes. God gives mankind five senses. <laughs> Animals. Move by instinct. I said animals move by instinct. If I see today in Guyana that some animals are passing Belgium, I am following them animals. All right. I'm following them because animals have instinct and they're sensing something is about to happen. Yes. In the tsunami, in the tsunami 2005, I believe, in the Philippines, I told you the other night, 2005, is around 26th to, 20, to 25th to 26th of December, the tsunami erupted from the bottom of the ocean. It came in like 10 to 15 feet first, came in on the shore. Men and women was having, they were having a good time on the shore. 
Mm -hmm. I've learned you Google it and check it. I want you to Google it. What I speak is the gospel truth. Google it. All the animals or the vibration from the bottom of the ocean and the earth towards the mountain. Guess where man ate to? The ocean, the, the tsunami came in and then it went out back. Men and women were running after the tsunami. The, the, sorry, the tsunami. We don't understand that when God give a warning, is a warning. Yes. Oh, and the tsunami mustered the strength at the bottom of the ocean. They said it came back 25 to 30 feet water. And it washed upon the seashore in the Philippines. Thousands and hundreds of people died. Mercy. But when you Google it, you will discover not even one cat or dog died. I tell you. You can preach your soul out to man. They will tell you, I'm not ready. Ready or not. Jesus said, here I come. Yes. So God said to Noah, mm -hmm. go into the ark. Yes. While the people are having a good time outside. Mm -hmm. The animals, they are going in two by two. Seven by seven. Mm -hmm. You must have eyes to see that something unusual is happening. Yeah. Go with the animals too if they're going. All right. But the Bible says that they eat and drink and marry and have a good time. And then God said to Noah, get into the ark of safety. And God shut the door. Mm -hmm. I want you to know this. God shut the door. Yes. Wasn't Noah shut the door? God did. When God shut a door, it's well shut. Yes, it is. When man shut doors on you, God would open up doors for you. Amen. So God who shut the door. Mercy was over. Mm. The Bible tells in the book of Revelation 22, 11 says, a day will come when God will announce, it is finished. He that is filthy, let, let him be filthy, filthy still. still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Yes. And I come quickly. And my reward is to give to every man according yes. to his work. The stories get sweeter now. Mm -hmm. One day pass. <laughs> no rain. I said one day pass, no rain. No rain. Two days, no rain. Mm -hmm. They start to mock Noah more. Yeah. You see, you wrong. We right. <laughs> no rain. And they're mm. outside of the boat having a fun, having good time. Three days pass. Three Bible days. reader, no rain. no rain. No rain. It seems as though that Noah wrong. Mm -hmm. Why come by to tell you today that God never wrong? Never wrong. God always right. Amen. Four days pass and still no rain. Mm -hmm. Six days pass and still no rain. By this time, the people outside believe that they are more in, in that ark with the animals. Oh, but day seven is coming. Mm. I said day seven is coming. Yes, it's seven coming. is God's number. Amen. Can I preach it? Preach it like I feel it. Yes, preacher. Seven is God's number. Seven golden candlesticks. Yes. Seven trumpet. Uh -huh. Name not alone when the Lord said seven. seven. Six can do, so you got to go down. Seven, seven is God's number. Uh -huh. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Yes. Six days shall thou labor and, and do, do all thy work. some your work. All thy work. All thy work. Yes. But on the seventh day is uh -huh. the Sabbath. Of the Lord thy like God. Amen. Seven is God's number. Yes, it is. The Bible tells us in Genesis 7, 1 and 2, Bible read what it says. Then the Lord said to Noah, uh -huh. enter the ark, <laughs> you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before mm, me in this God. time. You shall take with you of every clean animals by sevens, mm. a male and his female. And of the animals that are not clean, mm. two, a male and his female. Mm -hmm. Also of the birds of the sky by sevens, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of the earth. For after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth. How many days? How many seven, days? Seven, seven more days. Seven more days. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I will send rain on the earth 40 mm -hmm. days and for tonight, yes, and I will blot out from the face of the land every living thing 
that I have made. Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. And verse 10 said, and it came to pass, it came to pass after seven days yes. that the water of the flood were on the earth. Mm -hmm. So seven days, direct seven days, yes. the rain came. Definitely. But guess what happened? Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? Tell us. You know, I in Guyana, you're going to learn a couple of things about Guyana culture. In Guyana, when we have cats and they clean their faces, it's an indication that rain coming. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know it happened in Jamaica. I guess it happened in Jamaica. And them cats in no time that did not go into the ark start to clean their faces. <laughs> All right. And a dark cloud set over the ark on the mountainside. Mm. For the very first time they saw this dark cloud. Can I stop to tell you? Yeah. Can I stop to tell you that there will be another cloud? It says, the prophetess and energy white says, it will be like a man's hand, like a man's fist, mm -hmm. and it will get bigger and bigger and, bigger yes. and better. Uh -huh. I can't wait. I wish it was today. All right. I wish it was today. We have some stiff naked people in the world. Mm -hmm. In Guyana, True. in Jamaica, all, right. all across the world, your head yes. stiff. Uh -huh. If God tells you to do this, he said, no, you go the opposite direction. But whatever God says, you must obey. Amen. Obey is better than sacrifice. Definitely. So the Bible tells us that seven days pass. Yes. And all them cats that left outside had to clean their faces. A cloud came over. <laughs> And I don't know if you in Jamaica ever experience big raindrops, big raindrops. I experienced it and it stings you. I experienced it in Guyana. And for the very first time, the rain dropped on them. And somebody say, who spit on me? I tell you. This was not no spit. This was rain, man. Rain. You have never seen it. And the dark cloud burst. Mm -hmm. And the rain imagine. came. Humbling down. And the rain came and it fell so much that they had to fall to reach the ark of the mountain. Mm -hmm. And God sent the rain way up. Many brothers and sisters who will walk away from Christ will run back to the church when they hear the blast of the trumpet. True. They will say, no, I believe. Mm. Too late, too late shall, shall be, the, be cry. the cry. Yes. A preacher was preaching in the church. He says, one of these days, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh -huh. An old lady got up in the church. She's about 81 years of age. She got up in the church. She says, pastors, all a millet. You are saying that there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth? What will happen to those who have no teeth? Preacher. Lash the gum. The preacher straightened up and says, Will your gum will feel the eat? Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank God my gummy feeling no eat because I accept Jesus 36 years ago. Amen. I am onward bound. I am ready for Jesus to come. Yes. And therefore, you and I must understand today is the day of salvation. Yes, it is. Call somebody. Text in the chat. Yes. Pull up the decision form. Uh -huh. Said, listen, I think I want to baptize today. Yes. Man. The Bible tells us that the rain came and, and flood the earth. And many of the people that left outside ran. And they were, by this time, by this time, they were, they reached up to the top. Because they were down. Uh -huh. You, you, you got you to gotta understand what's going on. They, yes, they were preacher. down and the water flood the, flood the earth. That they finally got up by the ark and they're able to knock. They said, Noah. Oh, Uncle Noah. All right. <laughs> Brother Noah. Mm -hmm. Pastor Williams. Mm. Brother Mande. <laughs> Brother Noah, we now believe. Too late. You see, it's not Noah shut the door. Not Noah. It is God who shuts the door. Yes, it is. And when God shuts a door, it's well shot. It's well shot. Yes. They knock, they cry. 
All of them died. All died. But only Noah and his family were saved. Amen. Now, you can miss this here as I close. You got to get this here. Mm -hmm. You got to get this here. You think that was sweet? It's getting sweeter now. Bible mm -hmm. reader, is getting sweeter. All right. Seven days passed and ten days passed and Noah didn't know what was going on outside on the inside. Yes. You see, Bible reader, it was God who designed the boat. Yes. God no, did. no, no, no. We're going to go in some deep waters now. It is God who designed the boat. Mm -hmm. On the boat, there was no rudder. All right. There was no rudder on the boat. So who taking care of this boat? God is. God is the one who yeah. was navigating the boat. Can I stop by to tell somebody today that God wants to navigate your life? Amen. And I can prove it to you. Why there was no rudder on the boat. I can prove it in the Bible. It's in Genesis. Genesis 8. This yes. is what it says. If Noah had a rudder well, then he would know that the water are going down. Yes. And he would not have sent out a dove. No way. Does that make sense? Yes, preacher. If he had the rod in his hands, he would have seen that, well, the water going down, but he himself didn't know what's going on outside. No. Because the big man in charge is navigating the boat. Yes. And this one, the Bible says in Genesis 8, 9 and 10, what it says, Bible reader? But the dove found no resting place for mm. the sole of her foot. Uh -huh. So she returned to him into the ark, uh -huh. for the water was on the surface of all the earth. Then he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark to himself. Uh -huh. So he waited yet another seven days. Yes. And again he sent out the dove from the ark. Mm -hmm. The dove came to him toward evening. And behold, in her beak was a freshly picked olive leaf. So no one knew that the water was abated from the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a mighty God. Oh, yes. He I is. said, my God is a mighty God. Yes. We serve a mighty God. Mighty, 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 mighty. mighty, mighty. Yes. I can't do without him. No way. I can't breathe without him. Neither I can't can live I. without him. The Bible was written that we must understand that there is a God that exists. Yes. It not only exists, but he's mighty. Mighty. God will do the impossible. Yes, he will. I said God will do the impossible. Yes. The Bible tells us when the dwarf came back with that olive branch in his arms, mm -hmm. it tells me that everything is over. Oh, yes. But listen to this now as I close now and call you to surrender to Jesus. Amen. When God makes a promise, he stands on his word. Amen. Now, this thing happened over 6,000 years ago. Yes. This whole story, this act in Genesis. Six, over 6,000 years ago. If nothing else, I did not believe about God. This one thing I believe. All right. And it's not only in Guyana, it's happened all, the war, all, all over the world. Every time you see rain set up, I said every time you see the rain will set up, and God plays that rainbow, somebody of the preacher, the promise. And God plays that rainbow across the sky, covered mm. from Guyana to Jamaica, yes. to New York, to London. Mm -hmm. He covered the whole earth. Yes. If I didn't believe in God, that is one sign I believe that there's a God. Oh, yeah. Because if this thing happened 6,000 years ago, approximately, and he still, still is put the, rain. the rainbow Amen. in the sky, he's God. Yes. And if he promised he would not flood the earth, but he will burn it, you better get ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know the day, nor the hour, the time, nor the moment, but I know that he's coming. Yes, he is. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You ask me, preacher. I am not a false prophet to tell you that will come in 2022, December. I'm not a false prophet. 
I'm here to tell you that he's coming. I don't know. I've been counting the days as weeks it's and weeks soon. as months and yeah. months as years. All I can tell you is coming that any time now, yeah. my Lord and my Savior, the one who I waited for for so long, for yes. 38 years, I've been waiting for him. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Oh, when I get over yonder. Oh, yes. Over yonder. I heard music in the air. All right. Over Sing that yonder. Song. I got music in the air. When I get over yonder, man. When I get over. And when I see Jesus. Yes. The one who died for me. Oh, yeah. The one who ransomed me. Amen. The one who took me from nothing. Something. And cleaned me up. Yes. Oh, when I look at myself in the mirror today, I say, God, is it me? Is it me, Andre, you fix up? I am talking to somebody today. God Amen. wants to fix you up. Yes, he does. People in Cumberland, God wants to fix you up. Yes. The people in Washington, God wants to fix, fix you up. He wants to fix you up. The people in Powell, Power Avenue, mm -hmm. God wants to save you, man. Amen. Very soon, mercy door will be over. Mm -hmm. Mercy will be over. How would you stand? All right. That moment, that day, where you know to yourself that God giving you chances upon chances and you did not accept it. Some people are going to cry the last day. Lord, you could have let a preacher preach a little more longer. I would have accepted him. Hmm. You. Two weeks is good enough. Amen. The Ethiopian eunuch just read the Bible one time. Yes. And God air dash. Philip, place mm. him in the chariot. And the Ethiopian eunuch says, watch, there's water there. Oh, what yeah. hindering me from getting baptized? Amen. Stop the chariot. And they both went down. He was baptized. And he was baptized. Yes. Oh, pastor, not now. Oh. I got to marry first. Only if you live, no, she married first. Pastor, not now. I'm too young. Mm. Young people are dying. Yes, true. and going to Christless grave. True. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear the voice of the Lord, oh, yes. harden not your heart, Definitely. grieve not the Holy Spirit. So let's sum it up now. Mm -hmm. The message was sinkable, unthinkable, yes, floatable, impossible. impossible. Yes. Oh, the Titanic went down. That unsinkable went down. Mm -hmm. the bottom of the ocean so the bottom unfloatable <laughs> floating mm. I said the unfloatable floated floated I can't wait I just can't wait when he comes a second time amen in your home tonight today you listen to the word of God I have put before you life and death. Yes. Choose life. Definitely. Choose life, choose life and live. Amen. If you want to be baptized today, you're saying, Lord, all the way with Jesus, I will go. Yes. I want to follow Jesus. All the way. I could tell you this, man. It's not easy, but God going to help you to walk the walk. Yes, that's true. When I baptized 95, First of May, which is next week. Next week, Sabbath will be 37 years of baptism in the Lord with the, in the Lord. 37 years. More than half of my life. Congrats. More than half of my life. I've been walking. And you believe I had some good times? Hmm. I had bad times. May I tell you? Yes. That you'll reach some people in the church that will be miserable. True. I might as well tell you because when you come and you see them, you said me one come there. You'll read some people in the church that will be miserable. True. I got I I I went through it, but I'm still here. Amen. Because nobody can move me and will move me because God calls me. Yes. You get people will talk your name. Hmm. People will say all manner of things against you in the church. Yes. But you didn't come for them, you come to God. Amen. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on. I was ostracized in this church. I was being put out of this church. But a young man, a big man, about 90 something years, called me one day. He said, he said, sir, little boy, don't leave the church. 
All right. If they throw you out, come from the top. Okay. And if they throw you out again, come from the bottom. Don't move. I love the seniors in the church. There was a senior lady who I used to go clean her yard up. She said to me, she said, young man, I don't have much to give you. But I want to tell you, don't let a bomb nor dynamite move you from the church. I says, what? Mm -hmm. You know, if I throw a bomb, everybody out of their place. And she's telling this young star, don't allow nothing to move you. I am resolutely with Jesus. I don't know. I don't care how the storm rage. I know who is in the storm. And one day he will calm the storm. Amen. And he will take me out of the storm and take me home. Oh, yes. I'm ready for this. I'm ready. I'm ready for Jesus to come, man. This world is in a real mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sin messed up this world. Yes. I said sin messed up this world. Yes. The amount of sickness and death and pain and suffering. We live in a messed up world. Yes, preacher. I'm longing for that through the land. Yes. That streets of gold. Amen. Where I will live forever and ever. Oh, never grow old. I will never grow old. Yes. No gray hair. No way. I believe I look much more handsome. All right. <laughs> there is no wrinkle. Uh -huh. I don't have to shave. And oh Lord, I tell you, all my teeth will be back in my mouth. Amen. I, I don't have to buy any suit anymore. No way. Can I talk to somebody? Yes. I don't have to build a house anymore. Mansion prepared. Imagine this God who has gone ahead of us to prepare a robe for us. Amen. Not only that he's preparing a robe, he got a shoes for me. Mm -hmm. And not only no ordinary shoes, no clerks. No way. No Tommy, Tommy figure. Definitely not. <laughs> He got a golden shoes for me. Oh, yes. I, I have never worn a golden shoes. And imagine me, boy, Andre, get on golden shoes. And my robe. Yes. And more than, all, more than that, more than that, he has a crown to pay for me. Oh, yeah. And I know ordinary crown. He got a golden crown to give golden me. Golden crown. A golden crown. Mm -hmm. And then, then, then he will say, Andre, you would have preached enough. And then he will invite us, he will invite us to the banqueting table. Yes. The banqueting table. Can I paint a picture? Yes, preacher. Banqueting table. Mm -hmm. Rich and free. Bond and poor. Those oh, who are poor. Yeah. Rich, free, black, white. white. Uh -huh. Beggar man, thief man. Well, you have to change your life. Can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> rich and poor now sitting at the banqueting table Andre will dress down and Jesus will do the welcome yeah. Jesus will stand up and he will say if you just came into the heaven door and you don't know what it is this is Jesus not me and you just don't know what it is. This is a heartfelt, heaven sensing, killing, devil chasing, red, blue, black, yellow, white. Listening to your preacher. That's his welcome to us. All right. What a welcome. And he says, he will turn, he says, I'm feeling how he will turn to us. He said, I'm feeling like how Moses and Aaron felt. Mm. <laughs> After they crossed the Red Sea and the horses and the rider were drunk, being that old bloody grindy way. Mm -hmm. that's the welcome we have <laughs> and then he says I now invite you to eat of the tree of life oh yeah that bear 12 manner well, of fruits yeah it's not a Nancy story it's going to no happen way. no way are you ready for it amen people in Cumberland are you ready for it yes people in Washington Bolivar are you ready for it we're ready are you ready for Jesus to come? Oh, yeah. I'm ready, man. Amen. I'm going to make my call election show once again. God, I surrender my life to you fresh and new. Yes. Because today can be my last day. Mm -hmm. 
So I recommit my life to you, O God. Mm -hmm. Then I call upon you to commit your life to Jesus. If you want to be saved, write B in the chat. Go down to the church, 10th City, mm -hmm. Lands Church. Hurry, call somebody, tell them, get a car for me. Head down to the church. Walk into the church and tell the pastor that Pastor William says, baptize you. Amen. If that's your commitment, stand right, stand right where you are Amen. and let us pray. Amen. Our loving God and our Father, we thank you for the story today about the ark of safety. Yes, Lord. God, you are God of the impossible. Mm -hmm. And when we think about you and your grace and your mercies and how you do business, you don't do business like how we do business. You show yourself that you are a mighty God. Yes. God, today, there are persons in Cumberland, Washington Boulevard, mm -hmm. Power Avenue, Old Road, Arbor Road, Old Road, they heard the gospel. Yes. The Holy Spirit is convicting them of righteousness and of sin. Yes, Lord. And they are saying, Lord, I will go all the way with Jesus. Amen. We thank you for them. Yeah. Somebody who is standing between two opinions, they don't know what to do. May you surrender to Jesus right now. Yes. And call the pastor, call the elder, call somebody, tell them to come and pick you up. Today is our baptism day. Yes, Lord. Today, God will open heaven and take and be, He will take a panoramic view of those who are in Ten City and Newlands and Cumberland and West uh, in 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 in. in in all the avenues, Lord, we pray in a special way that you will write their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. Remember them, oh God. Yes. And save them. Yes, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody say. Amen. Amen. I want to know that I will be staying by because I will be joining with the pastors who will be doing the baptism today. I just can't wait to see you. I just can't wait to see you. Some of you that will be going all the way down into the water we gave of baptism. God wants to bless you. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready? Pastors, they are standing by. Waiting for you. And I'll be here too. I'll be calling the names as they put you down into the watery grave of baptism. Thank you for listening. Thank you, the folks at Belgium. It's way up in the afternoon in Belgium, in Guyana. But we have some faithful members Amen. in the church here at Belgium. God bless you. And you have a wonderful evening. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night's topic, two fighting families. All right. Tomorrow night, two fighting families. We are rejoicing here at Sydney today. In Jesus' name. Because two precious amen. souls and amen. I surrender
Let us pray. Kind Father in heaven, once more again as we approach thy throne room this morning, we do give you thanks, O Holy Father, for the preaching of the gospel. We give you thanks for your man's servant and for the way in which you have granted him utterance to deliver your word. As your word have gone forth, our heart have been touched, and we do give you thanks for all those who will respond to the preaching of the gospel today. Those of us who have already upset thee, and yet as we sit and as we listen to your word, we know that we are in need of true conversion. I pray that that will be each of us experience today. And those who have not yet upset thee, oh Lord, I do pray that as your word would have gone forth, it would have found lodgment within their heart. And Lord, they will respond to you by giving themselves to you. Thank you, Holy Father, for all the provision that you have made for us, spiritually, physically, and also financially. We give you thanks for this another opportunity that you have given to each of us that you have made a way of escape for us. Because soon or later, this world will certainly be on fire but you have always made a way of escape for your children. I ask that thou will overrule the plans of the wicked one, and I pray that thou will grant each and of the willingness of heart to respond to the good news of salvation. Thank you, Holy Father, for hearing and for answering, and thank you for speaking to each of us here today. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In Jesus' holy, precious name we pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory of great things he had done. Indeed, we have been having a wonderful time today on this a wonderful Sabbath day of worship. And what a word brought to us by the preacher, Pastor Andre Williams. His message entitled Sinkable, Unthinkable, Floatable, and Impossible. He reminds us that Noah, being a man of righteousness, walked with God, and that there is an ark of safety that is waiting for those of you who have not yet surrendered your life to Christ. And for those of us who continue to remain in the ark, 
it's for us to hold on to Jesus. God wants to save and to fix those of you who have not yet surrendered your life to God. And what a word. My prayer and my hope is that your hearts were tremendously blessed. I'd like to thank all of you who have joined from the various platforms, those in Guyana, those from Sydney, those from Ten City, those from Newlands, and from the various church right across the world. And to top it off, what an amazing day it has been for those who have surrendered their lives to Christ. Angels are rejoicing. Heaven and the dirt indeed are rejoicing. Now we can just imagine when we get to heaven what it will be like. My prayer and my hope for each one of us is that we'll continue to worship in unity in knowing that soon and very soon, the ark of safety for which God has allowed his people to be dwelling in, he will come and indeed he will allow us to tabernacle with him and forevermore will ever be. God continue to bless each one of you as you continue to listen and to tune in to the various programs that we will put on. As the preacher had outlined to us that tomorrow night's topic would be two fighting families. And I don't want to miss that. I know that you don't want to miss that. So I'd invite you all to encourage a friend to tune in, to join the program, share the link with someone in knowing that Jesus Christ will soon return. And our aim is to encourage, motivate, and to lead someone into a saving relationship with Christ Jesus. God bless you all. Keep strong and stay in Christ Jesus. We are rejoicing here at Sydney with two precious souls who have decided to book their passage on the ark of safety before it's too late. This afternoon, we have two sisters, Catalia and Kalik Campbell, who are saying yes to Jesus. Congratulations, ladies. And may God bless and keep you as you start your journey with the Lord. I have 13 questions to ask them. And at the end of each question, they will raise their hands in agreement. Catalia and Click, do you believe that there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Amen. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as a atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that God's, by God's grace through faith in shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Believe that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart. And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept the promise of transforming grace and the power of a loving Christ and, and promise to live a loving Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Do you believe that the Bible is God-inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice of the Christian? Do you covenant today to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will? Is it your purpose, ladies, Ketalia and Kalik, by the power of the indwelling Christ, to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which required the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and a memorial of creation? Do you look forward to the second coming of Christ and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality. As you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation by using your talent and personal soul winning efforts 
to help others to be ready for this glorious coming? Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying mark of the remnant church? Do you believe in church organization and it is your purpose to worship God with and support his cause through your tithe and offering and your personal effort and influence? Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you avoid that which is harmful, using that which is good moderately, abstaining from alcohol, drugs, narcotics in all its forms? Do you know and understand the fundamental principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Do you purpose Ketelea and Kalik, do you purpose by the grace of God to fulfill his will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? Do you accept the New Testament of teaching, teaching by baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized today as a public expression of your faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sins? Do you believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a remnant church of Bible prophecy and people from every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into his fellowship? And do you, Khalil and Kenley, desire to be a member of this local congregation here at Sydney and the worldwide church? Amen. They have responded in the affirmative to these questions. Is there a motion from the church here that we accept these individuals as members of our church subject to their baptism? It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Those opposed by the motion by the same sign. Congratulations again, ladies. May God continue to bless and keep you as you start your walk here with Jesus Christ. I want to invite Pastor Joseph Francis to come now, and he's very instrumental in preparing these candidates for baptism. I'm going to ask him now to come and pray a prayer of consecration. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, for your saving grace. Indeed, oh God, today we are rejoicing and heaven is rejoicing. Father, Satan has lost. He lose once more. We thank you, God, for your efficacious blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. And today, oh God, we have seen the result. Fruits have been there. Thank you, Savior Divine, for the lives of these two individuals, two precious souls. I thank you, God, for all that you have done for them and continue to do. May you continue to bless them, O oh God, and lead them even into your eternal kingdom. May God have mercy upon you as you continue to live for him in Jesus' name. The water is troubled, my friend.
Amen. We're standing by for Pastor Andre Williams to do the pronouncement. Uh, Mike, this afternoon, heaven is rejoicing. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We have two sisters that in the water, based on the profession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, Amen. God bless you. are closed and your heads are bowed and we are praying. Good and gracious God, we are so thankful for today. Today, oh God, we have added, you have added to your kingdom two more souls, two more precious souls. And oh Father, the Bible says heaven rejoices over one soul. And today two souls have been added. And so there is double rejoicing in the kingdom. Father, we thank you for the increase, and we ask, O oh God, that as these souls take up residence in your church, that, O oh Father, they will find mother and father here, brother and sister here, and even grandparents too, O oh God. I pray that they will find their refuge and their strength now and forevermore in the living church of God. I pray, O oh Father, that as we labor and continue to labor in the field, that, O oh Lord, you will continue to add to your church. Bless us now, I pray, and all those who have joined us here for service today, may the blessings that we have received so far continue to be with us throughout this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Dismiss us, Lord.
King, the wondrous love of Jesus, sing its mercy and its grace. King, the mansion bright and blessed, here prepare for us a place. When we all, when we, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. For when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for 